Excellent! Look everyone, there's Nori. You should all go follow her on Twitter. She's Nori Hardware. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm excited about today's video, not just because I'm pandering to you guys with my dog, but uh, because I have a bunch of computer parts all right here, ready to go. So today is going to be a build video. I'm going to keep this fairly casual. I'm just going to be assembling all this stuff. I will also be moving out to the garage. And in case you're wondering, this is the $400 build that I already outlined for my parents' new computer. Uh, in my January builds video. So if you guys are interested in just me telling you all the parts, uh, go watch that video. If not, just keep watching and I'll tell you all the parts again right now. Now, uh, something to keep in mind as I go through these is that you might notice some of these parts are actually different than the ones I recommended uh, a few weeks ago when I did the January builds video. So I'm gonna real quick go over all these and tell you what's the same, what's different. And for the purposes of letting you guys check out these builds on PC Part Picker, I will have links to both of them in the uh, description down below, both the original $400 version, as well as the actual parts I'm using here, which is gonna be a little bit more expensive uh, because I did get some much appreciated sponsorship from Cooler Master for the build. Anyway, starting off with the case is the Cooler Master Silencio 352. This is from the review video that I did on this case, so I've still had it. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll post a link to that as well. Very nice little um, uh, micro ATX case, and uh, I think it's gonna do a good job for me. Here's one of the changes, which is uh, just the SSD. Rather than getting that new SSD from ADATA, which is about 60 bucks, I'm just gonna go with this Intel SSD 510 series. I've been using this as an external like uh, device with this little USB cable for quite a while. It's 250 gigs. It's not as fast. It's probably gonna be a little bit slower than that ADATA drive, but when it comes to SSD snappiness and everything, it's gonna be totally fine for my parents' needs and it's the same capacity. So I'm gonna reuse that there and uh, save a little bit of money by not having to buy another new SSD. The motherboard remains the same. Uh, I got this from Newegg. It's a Z97M DS3H. Nice little, uh, fairly inexpensive and fairly small micro ATX board um, and, and that'll fit nicely. Uh, here's some of the differences uh, in the parts, which is the power supply and the cooler. Now, as I already mentioned, I reached out to Cooler Master and I told them I was doing this build. And I told them that uh, I already, or what I wanted was a Hyper 212 and their 80 plus bronze power supply. Um, what they sent over was the uh, Gemin S524 version two, which is right there, which is more of a horizontal than a vertical cooler. Uh, still a very good performer. So um, I'm, you know, no complaints from me here, but that is one thing that's different. If you guys are into the Hyper 212, it'll still work just fine. And it is a little bit cheaper than this one, but uh, I like this one cause it's pretty quiet and it does have that uh, orientation that uh, fires a lot of downward air towards the motherboard and the VRMs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the power supply again is also slightly different here. It's a V550. This is 80 plus gold rated from Cooler Master. So this is uh, again, a little bit more expensive than the 80 plus bronze model that I originally put in the parts list. But um, again, I'm not gonna complain because this is an 80 plus gold model. So it'll save a little bit on power and it's fully modular and stuff and all all those good things. The memory is also a little bit different than planned. Uh, this is just, this was only like two or three dollars more, I think, than that kit, the Ares, the G-Skill Ares kit. This is a Mushkin kit. It's all black. Um, and I mainly went with this, even though it's a little bit slower speed, I think it's 2133 instead of 2400. Uh, it's 1.5 volt instead of 1.65. And I don't know. I it's, you can still use 1.65 volts with uh, the G3258, but just to be on the safe side, I went with that 1.5, and again, it's uh, only a couple dollars difference, so there you go. And then finally, here's the uh, processor, of course, the G3258, little dual-core, overclockable Intel Pentium processor, and uh, I'm excited to actually get this installed, because I like I played with this a little bit right back when it first launched, but I really haven't in quite some time, so. But being a dual core, I think it's gonna be perfectly satisfactory for the needs of this build. Anyway, there though, guys, there are all the parts, and I'm just gonna go ahead, start assembling this little guy, and I'll come back to you towards the end and let you know how things went. Oh yeah, one last thing that's not shown here is the operating system, that is, uh, I'm gonna be just going for Windows 10, and uh, I'm gonna get that from kingwin.net, and uh, hopefully, I think I'm just gonna try out, they have like a $20, OEM version that you can get there. I think I'm just gonna go for that and see how it works and I'll, I'll let you guys know. Anyway, on with the build.
And just like that, the build is complete. So as you can see, um, well, if you're just looking at the outside of the case, it just looks like the case. But no, everything's installed, as you can see there at the back. Let me pop off the side panel and just uh, do a little bit of commentary on the build process and some of my thoughts involved. So. As you can see, um, it's not like too crowded in there, but um, I did definitely have some issues with uh, the cable management. There's just not a whole lot of space behind the motherboard tray in this case. Fortunately though, thanks to the uh, V550's um, all black cables and the fact that they're flat ribbon style cables, I was able to use some zip ties along this back edge here to kind of take especially that 24 pin cable and cinch that down. So even though there's a fair amount of cable showing here, I wouldn't necessarily submit this to pit my PC on awesome hardware, if you know what I mean. Um, everything's still pretty tucked away, so there's uh, still a pretty good amount of airflow. Speaking of airflow, you might have noticed during the course of the build that I actually did uh, initially uh, replace this rear fan, the exhaust fan, um, with one of the fans that um, Cooler Master sent over, which is the Silencio FP120. Um, now these are these are more static pressure optimized fans, but um, they you know they're they're also st still a little bit nicer than what comes with the case. The reason I didn't go with it is because that the uh, fan splitter I have because there is only one fan header on the motherboard right in here for uh, case fans. I got the CPU fan plugged into the CPU fan header. The fan header on the motherboard for case fans I have, I have split two ways, but I only had that three pin splitter in there and uh, the PWM fans are PWM, they're four pins, so I couldn't use that. So I put those back in and thankfully these fans are still very quiet, they're just the default ones that come with the case. Uh, apart from that, I got the SSD mounted right here. Um, I could have put it up top here as well and gotten rid of this cage, but there's nowhere for me to put the cage anyway. I just want to leave it in there in case I drop in, uh, we, we might drop in some larger capacity mechanical drives in here. And I do have uh, some SATA power just kind of on reserve sitting down there at the bottom. So if I do pop in a 3.5 here, I can just plug that in pretty easily. I also did some tricky cable management here with my SATA cable. <laughs> I just had to kind of loop it back and forth across itself. Uh, and then lastly would be the 8 pin, uh, 8 pin power for the, for the piece, uh, for the CPU is going up the left side of the motherboard tray right here, which again is not the most ideal situation, but there's no way to pass it through at the very top of the ca this case behind the motherboard tray. So I did that, and um, again, thanks to the flat cables from this power supply, I'll still be able to push that down flat and install a graphics card right there if I need to. So, but there it is powered on, and I'm just using the in-camera mic right now, but I still can't hear anything. You actually, my, my, my streaming system, which is over there, is probably making a little bit more noise than this. Um, but all these fans are super quiet. Everything's up and running. Uh, next step is gonna be to install Windows, of course. I'm gonna get that OS uh, install going. And then I think I will do a follow-up video um, on this system because I am going to be bringing it over and deliver, delivering it to my parents. And I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of their current PC that I built them, I don't know how many years ago, and this, and just what the difference is as far as speed and usability, especially going with an SSD instead of mechanical drives. Anyway though guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Paul's Hardware.